welcome to the new segment of Lockdown with Johnny Potenza. I'm not doing nothing different than when you saw me last time. I'm just trying to just stay out of arm's way, staying safe and healthy, visiting some people and uh, practicing the social distancing, cooking, eating. I need a haircut. That's why I got the, the, the hat back on the last couple of uh, segments because my hair's so thick and it's all out of whack. I had to comb it back. And I look like either Marlon Brando from The Godfather or Count Dracula, Eddie Munster, some people told me. It's all good. So now I'm just wearing my old drum wear, black shirt, cross, backwards hat. That's it. But I have a special guest tonight. He's a good friend of mine, actor, director, producer, John Bianco. You've seen him in The Sopranos and a bunch of other TV and movie appearances. And I have a clip of a bunch of segments of his work. So I'm going to roll that and then we're going to call John up and then see what he's up to. Yeah, to see you like, kid. I had any idea he was with you, I would have never. He didn't tell you about Hesh. I asked who he was. He high handed me. Uh, I thought he was a civilian. Johnny goes away. It's Phil's turn in the driver's seat and his heart gives out. I know. What? It's a metaphor. He lost his balls, is what I'm saying. Is this funny to you? No, no, sir. Because I'm two seconds away from slitting your throat. Stash is gone. Guy wants to get out. So you must have messed up your only job. Guess it's time to burn rubber. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Very good. Never heard that one before. We will let you know. Are you serious? We'll let you know, Mikey. I already told my wife I was in the show. What do I tell my goma if I don't get the part and I can't see her, huh? What? This guy is a notorious fixer. He gets most of his work out of Hollywood and DC. Prove I was in that room, Lieutenant. The video you mentioned only proves I was on set, just like 200 other people. You got nothing on me. John Bianco. What's up, pal? Here I am. How you doing, John? How's everything going? In the flesh, baby. How you doing through these uh these crazy times with the coronavirus? I'm asking everybody, so uh right. Oh my god. I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's a really it's a hideous virus um and I just really want to uh, you know send out my prayers to all the people that are suffering and that lost loved ones to this uh, horrible affliction. Um it's it's really devastating. And it's affecting everybody, you know, everybody in one way or another is being affected by this. Everybody. Um, and I just, you know, again, my prayers are with, uh, with everybody out there that are dealing with the, the craziness of this uh, horrendous virus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, it's surreal because it's like a movie. It's technically like a movie and, and we don't know when it's going to end and when is it going to be normal again? I mean, you can't even phantom say, when are we going to get back to life again? Just do normal stuff. Right. And again, like, you know, I mean, uh, getting back to quote unquote, what's normal, yeah. um, that may be a ways off because, uh, you know, it's a one day at a time approach, I guess. Um, uh, I mean, who knows? It may take a full year before everything is completely back to the way it was prior to this hitting us. Um, we just have to kind of ease our way in and hopefully uh, those numbers will stay down and uh, eventually uh, it will completely disappear. You know, I mean, that's that's the hope. And obviously if they come up with some sort of vaccine or something too, to just, you know, have people feel a little more at ease uh, moving forward. Yeah. God willing. And uh, you know, my condolences and my blessings to everybody, myself too. So let's get on a happy note, John. Uh, I know everything is, is on hold right now and you got a great movie that's coming out clean with uh, Adrian Brody. Why don't you talk to me about that? Tell me about it. Yeah. So I am, I'm so excited about that film. Um, we shot last, not this past winter, the winter before. We were up in Utica for about two weeks. Uh, it's the first time I got to meet Adrian Brody and work with him. Um, I also worked with uh, Glenn Fletchler. Um, he's from the show Billions. Uh, he's done numerous things. He was in The Joker. Um, he also was like the main bad guy in um, True Detective, the first, the first uh, uh, series, which okay. I think excellent series. I don't know if you got a chance to ever see that. I but. saw some of them. I didn't see the whole series, though. 
Yeah, the first one. Uh, but he's a, he's a, an excellent actor. He's incredible. Um, I got to play his right hand man. We were like the main bad guys in the in the film. Cool. Um, it's uh, the basic story is uh, it's kind of like a vigilante type film. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to give too much away because uh, they've they've been very secretive about it, and they've been working on it for over a year now. So, um, I, again, you know, I got the call probably back in early um, February that they were going to have the world premiere for the movie Clean at the Tribeca Film Festival. And that's that, great. Again, great that's places, something yeah. to really get excited about. It's such a hard festival to get into. Yeah. Uh, world premiere, red carpet, uh, you know, all the big stars. And uh, again, I was very excited about being part of that. Um, it's just, you know, Paul Sillette directed the film. Um, I, I know Adrian Brody is also one of the producers. Uh, it was an honor to work with those gentlemen, and they are true gentlemen, and they are all very gifted and talented filmmakers and actors. Um, that was supposed to be April 18th, the kickoff of the Tribeca Film Festival. That, as far as I know, <clears throat> is pushed to sometime in July or August, if yeah. that in fact does still happen then. Um, I don't know. Nobody they knows. Heard to say like if we get quarantined from these movie theaters for a while, are they going to release it like on Netflix or something like that? Probably? I don't know the logistics regarding that, John. Um, I got to be honest, which I'm hoping no on that. I'm hoping that yeah. we get to experience that festival, that red carpet, because that's. Um, I mean, it's just incredible, you know. And I really yeah. want to be part of that. So uh, a thousand percent. I, Yes. Now listen, let's talk about some of these other events. Like uh, the Soprano Con was supposed to be already. Now it's canceled to August. But then you said now they, they canceled again. Mob Con, correct? Yes. Mo so Movie Mob Con, you know, uh, is following up from the Soprano Con that we did back in November at the Meadowlands, which um, I felt was a, a real success. You know, that was great. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. I mean, just really, I mean, what those guys did, you know, um, just in, being able to interact with all the fans and God, there are fans all over the world of yeah. the Sopranos, you know, Michael Mata and his team, I just, you know, they really did a, a good job getting this whole thing off the ground. I mean, it was, nobody expected anything like this, any type of event like this to happen. I mean, oh, we, they did I, a great job. I believe we had over, we probably had over 15,000 fans from literally all over the world. I was meeting yeah. people that flew in from, you know, Australia, England, France, I mean, Spain. And I was like, and they were like, yeah, we came here just for this. So well, listen, I, I couldn't say enough of good things about Mike Mata mm -hmm. and his crew. They did a real great job. And uh, even, so, Vinny Pastor, even Vinny Pastor was, was surprised. At the right, fact. right. So, and so moving forward now, um, they wanted to put this movie mob con that had um, a lot to do with like different types of mob films. And I know, one of the other films that I'm sure you saw, The Brooklyn Banker, that was yes. going that was going to be part of the movie MobCon, along with a slew of other films. Um, so I was looking forward to that. That was supposed to be also April 19th, that weekend wow. down at the Harris in Atlantic City. Um, obviously, uh, wow. that got postponed. They told me probably sometime in August. And then literally, I think two days ago, I got an email saying that, you know, restrictions are in and that's not going to be feasible to, to do, pull something like that off. And understandably so, because the, the safety of the public comes first. And yeah. with all the craziness, you can't get 15,000 people together. No one will come out anyway. Everyone's going to be crazy with this, with, with, right. with social, with everything. Just right. concepts, everything, unfortunately. Right. So they now said possibly... Um, they're pushing it to 2020, sometime in 2021, but that date is not quite available just yet. All right. So listen, John, you got about two minutes left. Uh, why don't you talk about, what were you going to talk about? Well, I did, I did, um, you know, I wrote uh, a script for Steve Stanulis. Yeah, you know. um, Chronicle, Chronicle, killer. Chronicle of a Serial Killer. Okay. Uh, I wrote that many years ago, and I know he, he was always wanting to do this script. Uh, so we we did get it done in the summer of 19 mm -hmm. and uh, I got to play uh, his father in, in a flashback scene. Um, the killer's father, uh, you know, showing the abuse that the kid took, which in, in, in uh, eventually uh, led him to 
become a serial killer. So it's it's always fun to play those kind of, you know, offbeat, crazy characters, you know, a drunken guy who beats up his kids because I am yeah. the furthest thing from that. So, but it's, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, you just play make-believe and, and you go in there and, yeah, you know, you have a lot of fun uh, playing these types of roles and I, I welcome them with uh, with open arms. So that was a, a good project that uh, we shot and I'm looking forward to uh, whenever that gets done as well. Yeah, Steve was telling me a lot about it. He's actually looking forward to it. So listen, John, where can people find you on social media, uh, website? So, yeah, so obviously Facebook, you know, I, I post all my stuff on Facebook and then Instagram. Absolutely follow me on Instagram. I believe it's John Lower what is that, that lowercase thing? Lowercase, yeah. No, lowercase Bianco. So John Lowercase Bianco, you'll see my my images come up. And uh, yeah, definitely please follow me on those social media pages um, to find out, you know, what I'm up to, the latest films and projects uh, and um, shows. IMDB, I, I can imagine. IMDB, absolutely. You know, uh, look up my IMDB. Mm -hmm. Also, all the latest stuff uh, is is on there as well, so. Sounds good, man. Listen, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you soon, you know. And uh, Yeah, yeah. And, John, and listen, I, I, I'm proud to be par part of this show again. Uh, I remember doing the last show back when I actually had run – I was running a little late, and I came off the set of the Brooklyn <laughs> Banker. I believe that was the summer of 14? Yes, right? 14. Wow. I mean, it's just crazy. And you were booked for the new show up late with Johnny Potenza for April 2nd. And that's right. we had to cancel everything. So The day before my birthday. That's correct. Yes. But listen, keep in touch. And as soon as we go back in the book, you're on the first bill with whatever was supposed to be booked. So Sounds good to me, John. I'm looking forward to it. And thanks for having me. Uh, anytime, bro. I love you, man. And God bless you and your family, pal. Same to you. Take, Take care. care. All right. Bye-bye. Well, it's about that time. We got to say goodbye again. And uh, I'm Johnny Potenza. As I said in the last couple of shows, take care, comb your hair, and be safe out there.